Okay, let's take a look at some concentration units you're less familiar with. We're going to be working with how to describe concentration of a solution when we're comparing the weight of the stuff we add in, the solute, to the volume, sometimes of the water we're dealing with, that we're usually dissolving it in, the solvent, or but most times it, we're comparing it to the volume of the total solution. Now often, those are the same. Okay, and what I mean by that is if I have 800 milliliters of, solute, of water, and I were to add just a small amount of salt, it doesn't really change the overall volume of the solution much. It's still around 800 milliliters. Okay, the more concentrated you get a solution, the more that total volume will change. But for all practical purposes, most of the time the amount of water we're dissolving a, a, a solute in is going to end up being about the same as the total volume of solution when we're done. That's not true if we're adding two liquids together, but if we're making a diluted solution with something solid, like some type of salt that we're dissolving in there, then, then usually you could kind of treat those volumes about the same. So let's take a look at, at ways that weight is compared to volume. And the three common ones you're going to see are grams per liter, grams per deciliter, and milligrams per deciliter. What we have to get good at is basically dealing with things like deciliters, milliliters, grams, milligrams, all that stuff we have to be able to convert between fairly quickly and accurately. So let's just kind of set a few of these up. I made up a situation right here where we're going to take 15 grams of salt okay, and we're going to dissolve it in enough water to make about 800 milliliters of solution. Okay, This is a not an extremely diluted solution but it's also not that highly concentrated either. Okay, what we're going to try to do is describe this with five different units you're going to see show up. And you look at this and say, I thought we only had three different units. Let's take a look at what these are going to end up looking like. We're going to have grams per liter. We're going to have grams per deciliter. We're also going to have something called a weight to volume percentage, and we'll get into that in just a moment. Then we're going to have milligrams per deciliter. And then we're also going to have something referred to commonly as a milligram percentage. Okay. So let's just take a look at those five things. We're going to start with the easiest one, grams per liter. Now when you see these units, it gives you instructions on exactly how to calculate. I'm going to take grams divided by liters. So up here i got 15 grams. I'm going to write 15 grams. That goes on top. That's my solute that's being dissolved. I have 800 milliliters of solution. I need to convert that to 0.8 liters. Okay. Grab a calculator and plug it in and I get 18.75 grams per liter. 18.75 grams per liter. Kind of a regular sized looking number. All right, now let's jump down. Let's take a look at next one, grams per deciliter. Deciliters tends to be something and until this stage of science, you don't use it a whole lot. But when we start getting into um, dosages and medications and things you would find in a lot of medical settings, you don't really see deciliters show up until that point. But it happens to be a fairly common unit you know, with some of these uh, concentrations. So we're going to have to get used to it. The thing about deciliters is it takes 10 deciliters to make up one liter. So if I have less than one liter here, I'm going to have less than 10 deciliters. I just move my decimal one spot back to the right. And this becomes 15 grams over 8 deciliters. Take a look at that comparison and make sure you get that part down. In order to go between liters and deciliters, it's only a factor of 10. I move the decimal one spot. Now when I plug that in a calculator, I'm going to see something that looks familiar. This is 1.875 grams per deciliter. Hey, look, at it. it's about the same as this number here, just the decimals one spot over. Okay, so yes, there are some shortcuts to maneuvering this around. So I'm going to put 1.875 grams per deciliter. Okay, now, we're going to come back to that percentage here at the end. First, I want to show you this other one. Now, this down here, milligrams per deciliter, that's a... Uh, milligrams is a really tiny amount. And we don't deal with it a ton until we get to things like, you know, prescriptions and medications. They're given in very small amounts. So milligrams and even micrograms sometimes are the, the typical units we use. These will show up uh, typically when we have a really diluted solution. This one's not really diluted, so you're going to notice that the numbers just don't seem like they fit right. They don't seem reasonable for this scenario. So milligrams. This is 15,000 milligrams. 
and I divide that by 8 deciliters, and I get a really big number. I get 1,875 milligrams per deciliter. And that's a pretty big value. Like I said, this would be much more reasonable if I had an extremely diluted solution. This one's kind of an average solution, and so this, these may not be appropriate units, but we still have to learn how to use them. So 1,875 milligrams per deciliter. Now, these three units, these are what we're going to do a lot of our work with when it comes to figuring out how much of this medication should be given to this particular patient. We have to use these units because they tell us what measurements go into it. But when you look at particular labels on some of these medications, they use a little bit different description that really means the same thing. So for example, instead of saying grams per deciliter on that label, it might say weight to volume percent. These two things are identical. You need to get to the point where you see them and you just recognize you can interchange them when, when necessary. So 1.875 weight to volume percent is the same as grams per deciliter. When you see this on a label, it really means this behind the scenes. This is how it was calculated, grams per deciliter. So if I see a weight to volume percent, I'm probably just immediately going to change that to grams per deciliter because I have to do some maneuvering and some mathematics with it. I need to know what it represents. But these two things are identical. On the flip side, you've also got the milligram per deciliter, and that happens to be the same as milligram percent. So if you see a label with milligram percent, on there, it really behind the scenes means it was calculated by doing milligrams per deciliter. Oftentimes, if I see this, I'm immediately going to change it to that so that I can work with it mechanically and understand what's going into it and how do I make some adjustments for a particular dosage. Okay. So we have three different units, but then we have two like uh, other common ways of describing these two same units. So you really have to be aware of five different things that may show up in any given problem. And those are our weight to volume percentages we're going to have to worry about.